Hi book lovers! Welcome back to my channel. I'm here today to talk about some dark romance books because I read some new, well new to me, dark romance authors. I read four of them and they're all pretty popular and they've all been on my TBR for the longest time. So I finally decided to read them for this video and for a book signing that I was going to. I wanted to see what the hype was all about for these authors. So the four dark romance authors that I read were Jennifer Hardman, Amo Jones, Monica James, and Chantal Tessier. Four authors, five books, because I read two books from Monica James, but here are my thoughts on the books and the authors that I read. So first up, I read Jennifer for Hartman. Of course, I had to start off with her most popular book, the one that everyone seems to love, which is Still Beating. This was a book that I really wanted to love because everyone is obsessed with it. Like, people love this book so much. So, you know, I had to see what was going on with it and I'm kind of torn between giving it three and a half to four stars, but I'm leaning more towards three and a half because the more that I think about the book, the less that I actually like it. There's just some things that had me so annoyed that had me struggling and I'm so sad that I didn't love this one. I mean, it's not bad though because I did enjoy Jennifer Hartman's writing and I would read her again, but this one didn't quite live up to the hype for me. So it has a very interesting premise. It's a slightly dark romance. It's actually not as dark as I thought it was gonna be. It's a slightly dark romance about a girl and her sister's fiance who get kidnapped together by this crazy serial killer who likes to match make his victims and force them to be together physically while they're in captivity. Cora and Dean have known each other for about 15 years, over 15 years since middle or high school, and these two do not like each other. It's got some enemies to love lovers vibes because they do not get along. They constantly pick on each other. They constantly annoy each other. This is the kind of relationship that they've had for over a decade, so there's no love lost between them. But then one night, on the night of Dean and Cora's sister's bachelor bachelorette party, Dean and Cora end up getting kidnapped by that serial killer. And it's in this first part of the book that Cora gets raped by the guy pretty much almost every day. It's not too graphic with those scenes in the book and Dean does have to watch but then things start to change when the serial killer forces Dean to have sex with Cora and these days, these moments where they get to be together are sort of the only things that keep them going, at least until they manage to escape and I was actually very surprised that they were able to escape a lot earlier in the book than I expected. Like that whole captivity part ended a lot quicker than I thought. It's maybe like like the first third and then the rest of the book, the last two thirds are Dean and Cora dealing with the aftermath of what happened. So honestly, it's not too dark of a book. Obviously, there are some triggers, but a majority of the book is not actually that dark. Unfortunately for me, the majority of the book, the part where Cora and Dean are free, I was not a huge fan of it. I got extremely frustrated with Cora because it seemed like she never considered Dean's feelings for anything. Everything was all about her, all the healing, all the times that they fall back into bed together. It was all about Cora and I just felt so bad for Dean because yes, Cora did go through something awful, but Dean did too. So they actually started to fall for each other while they were kidnapped. They formed this bond, obviously, over something crazy and traumatic. And this is when Dean realizes that he's always been in love with Cora. It's always been her, which I don't actually buy because he was with that sister for literally 15 years. But now that they're free, Dean literally gives Cora everything. He makes sure that she's good, that she's safe, but she never does the same for him. So she really came off as selfish. I mean, I was still sympathetic over what she went through, but she didn't have any sympathy for Dean for what he also went through. So the best part about reading this book was basically Dean because of how patient and sweet and understanding he was. I just wish that Cora treated him the same way and treated him more fairly than she did. And then of course you also feel bad for the sister who gets literally the short end of the stick. And also I forgot the beginning of the book was a bit of a turnoff as well because of how Cora was so dismissive of her sister. She looked down on her sister because she was the type of girl who liked makeup, who liked to go out and party. I was like, is that a joke? Am I reading this in 2022? So as you can tell, this book did not work for me quite as well as I hoped it would. It wasn't entirely bad though. Again, I did like Jennifer Hartman's writing and I do 
want to read Lotus, which is like a spin-off of this book. It's somehow related to this book and it does seem like she writes a lot more emotional reads than actually dark books. So I'll probably have to mentally prepare for that one. So this was my first Jennifer Hartman book. It wasn't too bad, but I definitely wish I could have loved Still Beating More. Next up, I tried Amo Jones for the first time. And this is an author who a lot of people love, but also I feel like a lot of people don't like as well. Like you either love her books or you hate them. And she has quite the backlist. So I decided to read one of her standalones because I didn't have time for a series. So I settled on Sicko just because this was the one that sounded the most interesting to me. And it actually started off so strong because I was loving the beginning. Royce and Jade are foster siblings. So it's a very forbidden romance. It's a dark forbidden romance where Jade was adopted into Royce's family when she was dropped off at his house's doorstep when she was a newborn and Royce has always been so protective and so obsessive with him like even further than you know the brother level. So yes it is taboo with how they feel about each other but things don't actually happen until they're in their teens. But even though it's taboo, they're not related, so it's fine. And then something happens that causes Royce to leave his family and leave Jade, which you would think would never happen, but it does. He joins an MC, and then when he comes back a couple years later, he for some reason hates Jade, which I still don't really understand. He treats her like hell, not knowing that she actually lived in hell while he was away because she was raped, pretty much every day since he was gone, since she was 15. And the guy, the rapist, is supposed to be this whole mystery. But this part was when things started to devolve for me. I was just like, what the hell is going on with this book? Like the whole mystery with the rapist is actually so, so obvious. It's not even a mystery. You can pretty much guess exactly who it is because there's only one possible person it could be. So that wasn't mysterious or suspenseful and then the book also kind of glosses over the rape like it's just it just made it out to be like oh that happened to her but nothing bad came out of it. I don't know. It was just weirdly glossed over like yeah that happened. It sucked. And at this point I'm also wondering like what's going on? What hold does this guy have over Jade for still keeping her as his sex slave since she was 15 to now when she's 19? The book sadly just never felt cohesive. It was very all over the place. Like one moment it's this taboo romance and then all of a sudden it's an MC romance and then towards the end of the book it's a weird vigilante revenge book. There was too much thrown into the story that it ruined the read for me, so I ended up giving this one three stars. It's probably more like a two, but I'm bumping it up because of that beginning and how much I loved the taboo romance. The beginning with Royce and Jade as kids was literally the best part of this book. Everything else was either too obvious or too ridiculous or just not fleshed out enough, so I felt like it was just randomly plopped into the book. Especially that whole twist with the revenge thing at the end. It happened at, what, 90% of the book, which means we barely got any understanding of it. If it was actually an entire book about this revenge scheme, like we knew about it from the beginning, it probably could have been so good. But when you only dedicate 10% of the book to this huge scheme, it's not enough. So Sicko sadly did not work for me even though that beginning was so so good. And then I tried Chantal Tessier for the first time. I actually had to ask for recommendations on where to start with her books because I don't know anyone who reads her. And The Ritual came up a lot so this was the one that I read and I am so sorry but I hated this book. I have to give it one star. I did not like it at all. It's one of the most ridiculous books that I've read in a very long time and not in a good way. There were just a lot of things that didn't make sense to me that genuinely were so dumb or just seemed pointless. It's a dark noodle college romance. It's set on campus. It's about this secret society called the House of Lords that the hero is a part of. There's a whole initiation thing and every lord is given a woman, not even of his choosing. Like the society as a whole gives each lord a woman who doesn't even consent to being chosen. And Riot, the hero, is given Blakely as his chosen and she's actually the girlfriend of one of the other lords and a guy that Riot hates. Okay, so right off the bat, I could not take this book seriously because of the hero and his name. His name is Riot, 
like Ryan, but with a T instead of an N. And I'm so sorry to any Riots who are watching this video, but it's a terrible name. So that's a dumb and superficial reason for me not to like this book, but the actual Secret Society, the whole House of Lords, was ridiculous. It's literally a society for bored rich dudes, and I'm pretty sure 99% of them are also white. They literally were so bored that they formed this secret society so they could murder people, I guess. I just thought the whole idea of this House of Lords was so dumb because of how pointless it was. I still don't really know or understand the point of the society and why people want to join it. Again, it's just boredom. And then the romance itself is okay. I mean, it's nothing more than your typical bully romance where the guy treats the heroine horribly but he gives good D so she falls for him. Riot is possessive and obsessive but it's not really romantic at all. He sees her as like a, a possession, a thing that he owns. Sort of like a watch, that's how little romance I felt from him. So this book was a total fail for me and if I never see the word Lord again, at least not in a historical romance setting, it'll be too soon. And the last dark romance author that I read was Monica James. I read two of her books and one of them is the best one of this list and weirdly it's the one with no happily ever after. The first book that I read from her was Bad Saint which is the first book in the All the Pretty Things trilogy. It's a trilogy centered around the same couple so I do eventually want to continue with the series but I gave this first book three and a half stars. It was a, a fairly good start to the series but I didn't love it. It's another kidnapping romance that I read but this time it's set out at sea. Willow, who has grown up being neglected her whole life, has just married a man that she believes loves her and she loves in return, but on the day of their honeymoon, she gets kidnapped. She doesn't know why, she doesn't know who's behind it, but she's taken in by three men. And one of them is Saint, our hero. He does have his face covered for a majority of the book, so she has no idea what he looks like. But she's taken onto the ship with these guys on their way to Russia. She does everything she can to escape, but she does realize how hopeless it is. And since Saint is the only one who is even remotely nice to Willow, they start talking. He's not like nice nice because he is still her kidnapper. He just doesn't want to rape her like the other guys. So the bar is extremely low. But eventually you do figure out who Saint is, why he became this kidnapper, and who's behind this whole kidnapping. Willow also does get to see Saint and of course he is very very hot. And I mean it was a pretty good first book for this trilogy. I was hooked. I definitely want to read more and learn more about what's going on. The only thing that I didn't buy though was Saint, his character. He, I don't want to say exactly what he did, but his previous profession before he became a kidnapper and a and a killer. It was not anything close to what he's doing now. It wasn't physical or strenuous. So I didn't really see how he was able to transform in just two years from that profession to being this stone cold killer who's able to murder people and fight off five guys at the same time. He becomes his assassin and it only took him two years to do this. So I mean I guess he's just really that skilled. And this book does end on a cliffhanger so I'll eventually get to finishing up the rest of the series. It's just not like I need to finish it right now. And the last book that I read for this video is Beyond the Roses, another Monica James book. This one was a last minute edition. I didn't really expect to get to read it. My library just got the audiobook right before I went to go leave for the signing and go see Monica James, who I totally forgot to see by the way. So, you know, that's great. But Beyond the Roses, I gave four stars to. I was very surprised that I ended up enjoying this one because, like I said earlier, this is the one with no happily ever after. I mean, it does, but not really. It's a romance where one of the characters is dying, so right off the bat, you pretty much know that there's not really gonna be a sort of happily ever after at the end. And it's not dark dark like the rest of the books that I talked about, but it's still depressing. But I ended up enjoying it for what it was. It's about this girl named Lola who is rich and spoiled but she does have a tumor 
in her brain. She's done everything she can for this. She's done chemo, she's done these drug trials, and nothing has worked, so she knows that she's gonna die. She decides to spend her last moments at the summer camp called Strawberry Fields, which is a camp for terminally ill kids. She's there to hopefully help them with their last moments because she knows what they're going through, and it's at Strawberry Fields that she meets Roman, our doctor hero. He's the doctor at this camp, and he does have some secrets of his own. Their romance is slow and emotional and sweet. He's the one who keeps telling her to not give up, to keep fighting against her tumor. But again, you know that there's not gonna be happily ever after. The thing is, I like the way that this played out except for the epilogue, but the romance itself was great. I liked the main characters. I thought Lola and Roman were great together. As soon as they met eyes across the room at Strawberry Fields, there was that zing between them. The side characters were also well done and well written. I just wish I hadn't read the epilogue to this book because it kind of ruined the romance a little bit. It's a sad read but a good one. I didn't cry though but I still enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. I would say that if you don't mind this type of ending you should try it out. So those were the new dark romance authors that I tried reading for the first time. I'm very curious to hear what other people thought about these books. Sadly there were more flops than hits but let me know your thoughts. As always links to all the books will be down in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next time. Bye!